Hello and welcome to Age of Empires 2 HD, The African Kingdoms. In this video I'm going to be playing the first Ethiopian campaign. I'm going to play it on standard difficulty and as you'll see the campaigns are now voice uh, acted at the beginning which is awesome because that was a massive request uh, with the forgotten so it's good that that's there um, and also the campaigns are meant to be more eco driven rather than just scripted uh, following one character along a path like they were in the forgotten empires so that should be good so here we go Aksum the heart of our empire the cradle of Ethiopian civilization and culture since antiquity even so Every time our caravan stops here to sell its wares and acquire necessities for the village, the city seems less grand. More roofs need thatching, less shops are open, and even the shouts of the hawkers are ever so slightly less audible. My son Daniel doesn't notice, of course. For his twelfth birthday, I promised that he could travel with the yearly caravan and see Aksum for himself. Ever since we entered the city, the boy has stared in awe at every building. The city is indeed a marvelous sight for a country lad living in the northern highlands. As we passed a temple, Daniel abruptly stopped. Father, he whispered, his eyes fixed on the golden curtains. Have you ever seen such a treasure? Why does nobody guard it? Are they not afraid of thieves? I could not help but smile before replying. Why hire strong arms when even the queen dares not take them, my son? A deep frown creased Daniel's brow. Don't you lie to me, father. Surely a queen can do whatever she wishes. The boy apparently did not know the story of his ruler yet. That needed to change. Sit down, son. I responded, directing Daniel to the stairs of the temple. Forty years ago, when our queen Yodit was but a princess, she discovered the very reason why those curtains do not need any guards. The boy sat down, leaning close to hear the beginning of what was sure to be a truly wondrous story. Yodit was truly beautiful. Every lord in the empire contended for her hand, much to the displeasure of Gidajan, her nephew and the heir to the throne. Gidajan devised a plan to be rid of her, and the night he stole the golden curtains and hid them in her room. When the palace guard discovered the treasure, she was locked in the deepest cells. Daniel gasped loudly, but quickly covered his mouth and urged me to go on. Luckily, there were some who refused to believe the accusations. One loyal captain named Samuel helped her escape through a secret tunnel. As long as she stayed in the Aksumite Empire, Yodit would never be safe from Prince Gidajan. Her journey had merely begun. So we start with two characters. Uh, the princess and a buffed up Chotel warrior. So I'm going to go and play this on with Marco and Polo, cheats enabled, uh, so that we can sort of see what's going on and but to basically provide a walkthrough for this campaign. So as you can see, there are a couple of uh, Chotel warriors. Well, there's a spearman and a man at arms, just red ones, so that's an enemy. And there's lots of yellow troops. There's also lots of lions and zebras and elephants and crocodiles about. So, yeah, very sort of African savannery sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, plenty of yellow Chotel warriors lying around who are allies. Um, there's a orange village to the east, a purple village to the north, uh, a teal village to the west, northwest, and a scattering of red things. So if you start off by heading towards the yellow troops, they you won't be able to see them, but right against the edge of the map, there are two yellow chateau warriors. So they will turn yours when you go near them. So these are basically Gaia. All the yellow things are basically Gaia. So. Whenever you find one, try and collect them. Now, once you attack the red troops, um, that's fine. You'll notice that the princess has 100 health and has zero attack. So, your Chotel warrior is basically your bodyguard for her. 
after you kill them, uh, cross the little walkway bridge thing and head to the yellow village, uh, which will then turn yours. You can go and put your princess inside the town centre to keep her safe if need be, um, but yeah. After that, just sort of build up and scout around sort of the southern side of the map looking for yellow um, units that you can capture and stuff. Right at the south, um, about in the middle, as you can see, there is a slightly larger yellow clump. This is a couple of battering rams. These will be quite important later, um, and you'll definitely want to go and get them. Now that you have your village, um, you will be given the next lot of objectives, which is the final objective. You have to go and get the princess to safety by getting her to one of the three banners throughout the map. So one is to the north west, one is to the north, and one is to the east. So basically pick either the teal, the purple, or the orange uh, colour to go through to attack. And personally I think that the teal looks the easiest. There are quite a lot of troops at the orange one and they're nicely spread out. Um, purple is quite built up and defensive. Uh, also the orange has plenty of wild animals that can attack you. So I'd say teal is probably the easiest. And basically, all you need to do is grab the rams and search around the bottom of the map, getting as many Shotel warriors as you can. And once you've done that, you can easily just push through with the princess behind your troops. All this, all while this is going on, um, you'll be attacked by little red raiding parties. So just kill them off while you're building up. They're pretty easy to deal with. Now, there's a couple of restrictions that you have with your village. You are stuck in the feudal age. Uh, you have a maximum of 100 population. And, yeah, that's sort of about it. So if you can't really do too much with the feudal age. To go and get the bashing rams, um, you need to pay yellow 500 gold. There isn't any gold in the village so again you need to explore a little bit outside your village to go and find some gold deposits and mine these to get 500 gold you don't really need gold for much else unless you want a couple of men at arms or any other sort of basic units that you have maybe just go for scouts because it doesn't cost gold um, so once you've gone and paid 500 to yellow you'll get your three battering rams you can send them over to your village stick some troops in them to make the rams go faster and then just force your th way through teal. If you want, um, you could go further along and through a little red encampment, and you can buy a yellow, buy a transport ship for 500 gold um, by just clicking on it when you have 500 gold. Personally, there's quite a lot of watchtowers and things guarding the water, so I didn't choose to do that in this playthrough. But if you'd like me to go and do that method, uh, let me know in the comments. Once you've got your rams to your village, you're all ready to go. And to be honest, if you've kept a decent amount of troops alive from gathering them around, which you probably should have because they're not likely to really die, um, or you've just made a ton of um, men at arms, you're probably ready to go. You don't need to care about your village anymore. It's not necessary running back to go and save it. Uh, you don't need the resources because you should have a decent army and the rams are all you care about really. You can't make any more rams so if this does fail um, you're a bit screwed um, and you'll be in for a long game. So make sure you have a good strong army when you make your push with the rams uh, just send them all through, uh, push their way through the gate, and sort of take out all the things that could be a threat to the princess. Doesn't matter about actually killing things, just make sure that the princess isn't getting attacked, and you can go all the way through. You just steam rolling. And remember that sticking troops inside a battering ram increases its speed. The more troops you have inside it, the faster it goes. Once through, send the princess to the flag, and that will be 
the mission complete. And well done to you. Daniel laughed with joy. I knew you deep would escape Prince Gita John. After a few seconds, his face became more serious. But how did she become queen if she left Ethiopia, father? He finally asked. Indeed, a good question, Daniel, but we must be going. I responded while lifting him up. The sun is already descending. We still need to visit the market. Mother will not be pleased if we return to the village without a gift for her. If you help me find one, I will tell you how you deep fared in exile. That promise put the smile back on the lad's face. So, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more uh, African Kingdoms campaigns. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.